Saying goodbye is never easy, and we can't imagine how hard it must be for professional athletes or anyone who loves what they do. But these Hall of Famers played too long, broke the backs of their football cards, hurt their bodies even more, and in many cases, wrecked their reputations. So now in this video, let's have a look at some NFL stars who may have stayed in the league a little too long after they were at their best. First off, let's talk about LB Cornelius Bennett. At the end of it all, linebacker Cornelius Bennett finished his career with the team that drafted him. The former Alabama star was picked second overall by the Indian Colts in the 1987 draft. As a rookie, he refused to play until his rights were traded to the Buffalo Bills on Halloween of that year. No doubt, this was one of the biggest trades in NFL history. Bennett had a great career with the Bills and was chosen for five Pro Bowls. He was also on those teams that set a record by going to the Super Bowl four times in a row. Bennett played for Buffalo for nine years and had a total of 51.5 sacks, six interceptions, and 19 fumble recoveries. The defensive star signed with the Atlanta Falcons in 1996 and played for them for the next three years. He played for the Falcons who made it to Super Bowl 33. Bennett was let go at the end of the 1998 campaign, which is how he ended up in Indianapolis. Bill Polian, who was the general manager in 1987 and helped set up that trade, signed Bennett and he played for the Colts for two years. During his time in Indianapolis, where the defense was still finding itself, he only got eight sacks and no interceptions. Next up, we have W.R. Isaac Bruce. Isaac Bruce, a wide receiver, got his start in the NFL with the Los Angeles Rams. The talented wide receiver was taken in the second round of the draft in 1994. He was a rookie during the team's last season on the West Coast. Bruce became a big name in the league very quickly. In 1995, the receiver's second year in the NFL and the first year the team played in St. Louis, he caught 119 passes for 1,781 yards and 13 touchdowns. A few years later, quarterback Kurt Wagner joined the team. And in 1999, when they won Super Bowl 34, the greatest show on turf shocked the football world. Also, we all know how the Rams took the lead for good in the game. Bruce would continue to put up big numbers with Warner and later with quarterback Mark Bolger, but in his 14th and final season with the team, he caught 55 passes, four of which went for touchdowns. This really wasn't something we'd expect from Bruce. After that, he joined the San Francisco 49ers the next year and caught 61 passes, seven of which were touchdowns. But in 2009, he only caught 21 passes in 10 games, giving him a career-low 12.6 yards per catch. Still, Bruce is only one of eight players who've caught at least 1,000 passes in their careers. To say the least, that's not bad at all. Moving Moving on, there's also S. Rodney Harrison. Rodney Harrison, a safety, was one of the hardest hitters and most intimidating players in the game. He played for 15 years, first with the San Diego Chargers and then with the New England Patriots. Harrison had a successful career with the Bolts, and in his first two years with the Patriots, they won the Super Bowl. But the physical defender was starting to show signs of wear and tear. In 2005, a knee injury ended his season after only three games. A year later, Harrison could only play in 10 games. During the Patriots' 2007 Super Bowl season, he was suspended for four games for breaking the league's policy on drug use. After that, the player was only six games into the 2008 season when he hurt his thigh badly. This ended his season and, in a way, his career too. But let's go back to Super Bowl 42 in 2007. Harrison was on the wrong side of two of the biggest players of the game by the New York Giants. One was by tight end Kevin Boss and the other was by wide receiver David Tyree. Both of these plays happened in the fourth quarter. New York would be the first team to beat the 18-0 Patriots this season. Surely Harrison had a great career, but the end of it wasn't always very satisfied. In his last four seasons, he was hurt 29 times and never seemed to be the same after a great postseason in 2004. Not to mention, G. Steve Hutchinson. Guard Steve Hutchinson was one of the most reliable blockers in the league for more than a decade, and he helped put together two of the best left-side duos in the league while he was played. During his time with the Seattle Seahawks, the former first-round draft pick teamed up with Walter Jones, a perennial Pro Bowl left tackle, to form a powerful duo that helped make Sean Alexander's 2005 MVP season possible. In 2000, in 2005, the Seahawks went to the Super Bowl for the first and only time in franchise history. In 2006, Hutchinson would transfer to Minnesota, where he would play alongside left tackle Bryant McKinney. The Vikings drafted running back Adrian Peterson in 2007, and the rest of the story still being written. After making seven straight Pro Bowls from 2003 to 2009, Father Time was once again an unstoppable opponent. After two more seasons with the Vikings, Hutchinson was let go. Hutchinson signed with the Tennessee Titans in 2012, which was his last year in the NFL. Let's look at QB Brown. Brett Favre. The man has thrown more touchdown passes than anyone else in NFL history. But do we still think the quarterback, Brett Favre, kept playing football for too long? The great passer has the most yards, touchdowns, interceptions, and games started by a quarterback. He was the coach for the Green Bay Packers when they won Super Bowl 31 and went to Super Bowl 32. After 16 years with the Packers, he was traded to the New York Jets, where he played for one season in 2008. Now, some of us say that Favre's best season might have
have been 2009 when he led the Minnesota Vikings to the NFC North title in the conference championship game. During the regular season of that year, Favre threw 33 touchdowns and only 7 picks. He did make a big mistake in the NFC championship game though. Favre's string of stars ended in 2010, a year in which he was picked off 19 times and scored only 11 touchdowns. Keep in mind that it was the third time in the past six years that he'd thrown more interceptions than touchdowns, and the drama of not knowing if he'd come back each season got old for some. Number four is great. There's no doubt about it, but by the end of his career, had he worn out his welcome, following up, RB Eric Dickerson. Eric Dickerson, who is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, may never be matched, at least in the beginning of his career. In 1983, the Los Angeles Rams picked the former SMU star with the second overall pick in his first season. He set an NFL rookie record by running 1,808 yards. The next season, Dickerson ran for 2,105 yards, which was a league record. He did this for head coach John Robinson. Even though Dickerson ran for 1,821 yards for the Rams in 1986, he wouldn't be with the team for long. The unhappy runner was traded to the Indianapolis Colts in October 1987. The trade, which also involved the Buffalo Bills, turned out to be one of the most important in NFL history. Dickerson ran for 2,970 yards in his first two years with his new team, with 1,659 of those yards coming in 1988. But beginning in 1990, the number of games he played and yards he ran would go down. In 16 games with the Los Angeles Raiders in 1992, he ran for 729 yards. A year later, the less than healthy superstar played for a short time with the Atlanta Falcons before calling it quits. Finally, we have RB Fred Taylor. Did we really see New England Patriots running back Fred Taylor? Yes, the good runner spent his last two seasons in the NFL in Foxborough where he played 13 games, ran for 424 yards, and scored four touchdowns. Taylor has run for 11,695 yards, which puts him 15th in the NFL's history. He did most of those yards with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Not bad for a player who wasn't known to get hurt often during his career. In seven of his 10 years with the Jaguars, Taylor ran for more than 1,100 yards. But in 2008, backfield partner Maurice Jones-Drew took over as the main backfield player in Jacksonville. In 2009, he moved to New England, where he spent the last two seasons, neither of which were very good. That's a wrap for this video. How do you feel after finding out about all these players who weren't ready to let go of the league? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.